Hi, welcome back. It's Jill with Go English Coach. Um, and today I'm really excited to talk to you guys uh, quickly about, we are halfway through our first, um, actually our first class, um, our intermediate grammar class level one. So this is our level one intermediate grammar class. Um, today, our lesson, we are going to begin, so last week we were, the last two weeks we've been doing some present tense and, um, hang on, present tense and present progressive, sorry my thingy fell off here, um, present tense and then present progressive, and this week we're going to look at the past tense of regular verbs, Irregular verbs, we, there are lots of those, and the past tense of to be, okay? So we start every class with questions, then we do a little bit of a review. We'll do an introduction, a grammar presentation to um, the past tense, and then we'll work through some, we wanna focus some time today on the irregular past tense, and there are a lot of really common um, English verbs that in the past tense are irregular, right? So like to have, um, to have in the past tense, they had. So it's not just simply adding an ed like the rest of the verbs. Um, you know, you've got these irregulars, to go, we went, okay? So we're gonna look at some of those today. And then I'm gonna give you guys a worksheet on uh, that, that can help you kind of just really remember those, those irregular ones, okay? Um, so for Facebook Live, hello and welcome everybody. I'm really glad you're here. Um, for those of you on my Zoom class, um, this is the best way for you to be able to interact with me. So for those of you on Facebook who would like to join our live classes, it's what, uh, like a, a much better experience um, being that you are in this classroom on Zoom online with me. Um, and so to do that, of course, you guys know, go to the website, goenglishcoach.com and then sign up for a gold membership. Gold members get access to um, four classes each week that are live, like just like this but you are actually in the class with me, which is awesome and I love it. Um, okay, so if you have questions, a lot of you have been reaching out to me about how to sign up. It's really simple. The website is very step-by-step, step. you know, just go to the site and um, go English Coach. Maybe I need to put that on here. Go English Coach, okay, dot com. And then you're gonna do the gold membership, okay? So gold members are the ones who get the uh, access to all of the live classes, okay? Um, so let's get started. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and put them or, or ask them to me here, and we will jump in. We're going to jump in on this lesson. So who's all here with me today? Hello, Rhonda. Hello. Okay, great. So here's the book we're using for today. We've got the Focus on Grammar 3. Again, I really love this book. Um, and we are working on, let's see, this is Unit 2, the Simple Past Tense. Okay, so Simple Past Tense. Okay. So let's look at Simple Past. Okay, so let's look at the verb to be. Okay, to be. So in the present tense, you guys, right? We say, I am, you are, very simple, right? She is, okay, now in the past tense, here's your verb, am, are, is, right? In the past tense, we have to look at what these words change to. I am changes to I was, okay? I was sick yesterday, okay? Um, you are goes to you were okay so this is to be to be and of course because this is the most co common verb in English the copula uh, we have to learn these tenses and we have to be really really good at them okay um, she is you guys she 
was, he was, it was, okay? It was a wonderful day yesterday. He was very helpful yesterday, okay? So we're talking in the past, we're shaking the verb to be and we're putting it in the past tense, okay? Let's look at the plurals. We've got we and they. We, let's see, so in the present tense, we are, changes to we were, okay? We were. You guys probably know this already. When we move into the negatives and then the question asking stuff, that's when it gets a little bit more like, oh yeah, I forgot that part. Okay, so they are is the present and we're gonna change that to the past. They were, okay? We were um, excited to go to the museum. We were happy. We were, um, we were driving, okay? So that's the past progressive. We're talking simple past here. Um, and we'll get into that in another lesson. Actually, in, in our second course, we'll look at that, okay? They were um, <clears throat> under the table. What in the world kind of a sentence is that? Okay, so if somebody says, where maybe something is lost, I can't find my shoes. Somebody says, I found them. And you say, oh, where were they? They were under the table, okay? That's what happened in my head all really quickly right there. Um, okay, great. So past tense here, was, were, was, were, were, okay? Um, so, you know, kind of store that away. And we're gonna practice it a little more here. Okay, so um, I was, and then the negative. So you guys, I, I like to, let's put this all in a nice little chart here. You guys know how much I love charts. I like to organize information because it helps me to notice the patterns of English, right? And language is really just a collection of patterns and sounds. So when you can recognize the patterns, you can apply them even in scenarios where you're not completely sure if the word is correct or not. So when you study the structures of a language, then those structures can grow. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, the structures grow and then expand into other things, right? So that, and that's the, in, in my mind, that's the mark <clears throat> of true intelligence is when you have some information and then the information grows on its own in your brain and it creates new information. And of course, sometimes you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. Nobody, no one expects that your English is 100% perfect. Uh, I mean, even native speakers are not perfect, you know? So, um, but what we do want, so goal, the, you know, perfection is not the goal. Um, comfort and ease and access to the language is what my goal for you guys is okay those are the those are the goals that i really want for my students is to have comfort and ease and confidence when they're speaking english and knowing somewhere in your body that even if you make a mistake you can stop and then correct the mistake okay and continue on in your conversation without having to stop or not get your point fully um, across to the to the listener or the person that you're speaking to. Okay, so that's really important to me. Um, so let's rewrite these. So we've got I uh, was. Okay, we're in the past tense. You were. Okay, this is the positive, right, you guys? And then we're going to change it to the negative. Um, she was. We were. And then they were, okay? So let's look at that. Um, actually, let's look at these sentences. Let's make more complete sentences because otherwise it's kind of arbitrary. Um, so I was um, sick yesterday, okay? That's a positive sentence. I was sick yesterday, okay? You were... Um, Let's see, hungry last night. So we're using these time stamps here, right? Yesterday, last night. Okay, she was 
angry um, last, oops, last week. She was angry. Okay, so we're talking about states, states of being, sick, hungry, angry. Those are those adjectives, okay? Um, she was angry last week. We were um, happy after dinner. So maybe this is sometime in the past. Dinner was in the past, okay? And they were excited. Excited to be home. Okay, so maybe these people were on a vacation and then they arrived home and they were excited to be home. Okay, um, great. Okay, so we've got these past tense. Let's do a little squiggly line under them here. Now let's change these to the negative, you guys. Where in this sentence does the negative piece go? Where does it go? Okay. I was sick yesterday. So we're going to change this from positive to negative, and we're going to input a not here. Right after the form of to be, I was not sick yesterday. You were not hungry. So very simple, okay? This part is simple. So we're going to just put it right here. I'm going to put a little star. Actually, let's change the color here so it's super clear. Um, so we're going to just put a little star here and then we'll look at the contraction part of this, you guys. Okay. So we're going to put that not in the, this space. Okay. You guys know this already. Okay. So let's look now at what those contractions are. What are those contractions that go with these verbs? Because that's the most, um, important part in terms of you know, 100% of the time, almost maybe 99% of the time, we use the contractions, especially in spoken English. Um, when you are uh, speaking English, you're going to use the contractions. Many times when you are writing English, even in a professional, uh, you know, in a professional email or professional interactions, in the written way, you can use um, the contractions. I would say the only time you don't use contractions is if you're trying to have a very formal written thing. Um, so for example, uh, if you are writing a paper for college, if you are, um, if you are, yeah, if you're writing a paper, your thesis, you know, a very, very professional, um, email or something like that, you would want to just not use contractions. And contractions are not bad. Um, as I said, it is a mark of a very fluent speaker or somebody who has a lot of background in English. So, so using contractions is perfectly fine. Um, like I said, in, you know, when you get into different registers, a register is kind of like a different level of speaking. When you get into the more professional or, um, you know, so for example, I have a friend who's doing his um, PhD thesis and in his writing, you know, you're going to say, we're not, you're going to, and not the, the contraction. So, but in all other scenarios, contractions are perfectly acceptable. Okay. Um, okay. So I wasn't, so we're going to say, we're going to add was and not, and we're going to change it to wasn't. Now I want you guys to pay attention to the pronunciation. What does it sound like? Okay, if you learn this now, wasn't, it's a Z sound here. Wasn't, uh, this is that uh sound. So it's not wah, it's uh, okay? Um, weren't. We weren't hungry last night. We went to the restaurant, but we weren't hungry. Er, so this is wuh. That's your pronunciation. If you've been in my pronunciation classes, you are familiar with these symbols, okay? Um, I, she, excuse me, she was angry. We're gonna go back to the same one, wasn't. Very easy, right? She wasn't, she wasn't angry last week. No, she wasn't. Um, we were happy. So these are all duplicative. They're all the same, right? So was, wasn't, 
weren't, wasn't, weren't. And then the last one for they, of course, is weren't. Okay, weren't. Now that is one that you guys probably have to pronounce or practice the pronunciation of. And the best way to do that is just to kind of make a bunch of different sentences with that and then, you know, kind of run through them and, and listen to yourself saying it over and over. I really like the strategy, you guys, of taking your phone and recording um, yourself saying sentences. And it really, really helps in terms of, um, you know, because sometimes we can't hear those subtle, subtle, small differences in the speech, right? And so when you, when you record yourself, it's so much easier to hear, you know, what you're doing and where you're making mistakes. And then if you, if you, if there's somebody's English that you like, or, you know, maybe there's an accent that you like on somebody that you follow on YouTube, or if you really like, you know, the way I speak, you know, always use my videos and stop and repeat and stop and repeat and try to compare those two different recordings and see where you're having problems. Um, and, and then try to fix whatever those issues are. Okay. But, um, but really taking that part of it seriously, I think is really important. Uh, because like I said, what's the point of, of studying a language for a really long time and still not being able to speak it? Um, so we're back here. Hopefully you were able to get some of those sentences down. I have um, five more sentences here, all in the past tense, okay? And we already looked at how to change them into the past um, tense uh, and make them negative. So now let's take a look at what we, how we change the sentence to create a question. Okay, so this is the same formula. And if you remember from our past lessons, what happens is the verb comes out to the front, right? So let's continue in that same. So this is again about recognizing patterns. And the pattern here is the same as in the present tense. And that is that we change the, um, the position of the verb and that creates the, uh, the question, okay? So I was hungry is a statement. Now to make it into a question, let's change the position. And you're gonna say, uh, was I hungry? Okay, kind of a strange question, but for the purpose of this lesson, it makes, it makes some sense. <laughs> but you never really would ask yourself that question, so. Okay, you were tired, you were tired. So let's change the position. You're gonna change and swap or exchange these two words and it becomes now a question. Were you tired, okay? Were you tired, okay? And remember with uh, English questions and many languages as well, at the end, we go up with our voice. Were you tired, tired? Okay, up at the end, signals it's a question, okay? And that's really important. Um, uh, and we don't do that. So when you take my pronunciation and fluency class, we talk a lot about intonation. Why? Why do we talk about intonation? Because intonation carries um, understanding and meaning. So, and we'll talk about that more in the, in the next class at our class at noon. Um, because pronunciation and fluency uh, in this way with intonation is really critical, okay? So just in this, in, for this, for the purpose of this class, just know that when, when you have questions, of course, you're going to go up at the end with your voice and really practice that, okay? Um, she was happier then, okay? Let's change this into a, a, a question. Was she happier then, okay, was she happier then? So when we have this happier, it's a comparative, okay? Um, we'll do that in a different class, but um, essentially when you have the word happy, okay, you're comparing one time to another time and then it, the comparative is we add er or I, E, R when it's a Y. Okay, so let's, let's re, we do that in our next class. So don't worry about that for right now, okay? Was she happier then, okay? 
We were moved by his speech. What does that mean, moved? It's not like to actually move a location. If you say, I, I was moved, it was like a, it's an emotion, uh, a feeling about how you felt when you saw something. When you said, oh, wow, that was extraordinary or that was excellent or really, really great. I felt my body moved. You know, it's not really about movement, but you felt like maybe like a shift in your, in your body or some sort of overwhelming emotion that um, was very touching to you or tender or interesting. Okay, so we were moved. Okay, were we moved? Okay, I'm not gonna write the rest of that sentence, but you can understand what I'm talking about here. And then finally, this last one with the, uh, the third person plural. So we've got they were, we're gonna say were they, were they moved? Okay, by the speech. Oh wait, no, were they under this room? Were they, they were under the table, were they under the table? Sorry, I blended those. Okay, were they under the table? Were they under the table? Okay, so also practice kind of that intonation. Was I hungry? Was I hungry? Were you tired? Was she happier then? You can hear how my voice goes up at the end. Were we moved by his speech? Kind of a strange question. <laughs> were they under the table? Table, table, versus here, they were under the table, table. So it's almost like the whole sentence kind of flips. Um, like it's like the inverse of that almost, if you could think of it that way. Um, Okay, great. So now we've got the questions. Let's look at how do we answer these, okay? So these are yes, no, of course. We've talked about these before. Yes, no questions. Um, and the easy answer is just yes or no. Was I hungry? Yes. Or the more complete answer um, is was I hungry? Yes, I was. You know, so you're just gonna, um, you're just gonna take the, the subject and then put the verb right after it. So no, I wasn't. You guys got that, right? No, I wasn't. Okay, wasn't. Were you tired? Yes, I was. And then the same thing here, you guys know I wasn't. Of course, that does not change because it's the same answers, okay? Was she, so this is, so, so even though this is were, right, in an I and a you conversation, you change because you're talking directly to that person. So I, were you tired? Yes, I was, is the response. So that's why that changes from were to was. Otherwise, in all of the other sentences, you don't change the verb. Just in that you and I conversation because you're, you're speaking to the person, not about something. So these are the first and second people, right? And then the third person is down here. So again, here with was, we're gonna have, was she happier then? Yes, she was. No, she wasn't, okay? Just the same. So yes, you're gonna keep, yes, she was. Don't forget to keep that pronoun correct in talking about and answering that about that person. Um, and then no, she wasn't. Okay, were we were moved? Oh, we just, oh my goodness. I'm making mistakes here. Were, <laughs> were we moved? Okay, that's your question. Jeez. Okay, were we moved? Yes, we were. Yes, we were, or no, we weren't. We're getting a little tight here, so I'm gonna put this down here. And then these are actually the same. So for both of these, for we and they, yes, we, were, no, we weren't. And then for they, you're gonna just swap those out and do they. Yes, they were. Uh, you guys already know this because I know by now that you have recognized all of these patterns. Okay. All right. That's what English is. It's what all languages are. It's just a series of patterns that you have to recognize. Um, so, okay, take a minute and pronounce these sentences. So on the 
playback, you guys just pause this video and take a minute to ask, ask the question and then answer. And actually, if you have a partner or somebody that you can practice with, you can, you know, practice with using these questions and answers, like creating a nice conversation would be really helpful. Okay. Um, great. Um, let's see. Okay. You guys pause and go ahead and do that. And then we will continue on our path. We are going to look at doing a little bit of um, introducing of the regular past tense, and then we'll do some practice together today, okay? All right, you guys, so we just finished looking at the um, past tense of to be. Uh, and next really great step is looking at the simple past tense of all the other verbs. Now, we're going to start with regular, and then we will look at irregular verbs because there are just so many, and so many of the common verbs that we use every day, all the time, are irregular ones. So for the simple past tense, you guys, let's look at the regular past tense. And simply, we take the verb and we add ed, okay? So we add ed. So let's like, let's, uh, so a verb that we can use, let's use travel, okay? Travel, very simple and regular. So there's nothing strange about this one. So to use that in the past tense is simple. We say travel and then we add ed. That indicates that it's the past tense. Um, and it's the same for all of them, okay? Um, Perfect, so I traveled, you traveled, she traveled, we traveled, they traveled. That's what's so easy, okay? Um, so here's an example, um, and then, well, let's do this. Okay, so this is just the, a regular past tense. I traveled, you traveled, um, he, she, it traveled, they, we, all of them are the same. Now, let's look at, um, Let's look at what happens when we make this negative. So here's the positive, you guys, and let's look at the negative. What's the negative of this, okay? Um, I traveled, let's make that negative. We're gonna say, I didn't travel, okay? The same for all of them. You didn't travel. We didn't travel, didn't, didn't. Okay, that is another one of those, you guys, that we need to make sure that we are pronouncing correctly. Okay, didn't, didn't, okay? Um, and okay, the other thing I want you to see is that it is not, um, it's didn't and then travel with no ed here. Okay, so that is another thing no ed on the negative because this part is the part that indicates the negative aspect of the sentence okay i didn't travel you didn't travel she he it didn't travel okay we didn't travel they didn't travel no ed okay um so great so let's look at that a little bit more um you guys got this Remember, of course, the pronunciation, if we look at that here, di, I think this one is a little bit easier than the weren't and wasn't uh, because of those R's. Um, but there you go, that's the pronunciation. Didn't, 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 okay? We didn't travel. Um, great, okay, let's look at the questions. Again, you guys, this is the regular, regular, okay? Um, for questions, so let's do, I didn't travel. Let's change these to a question, you guys. Okay, remember the same pattern. Recognize the pattern. What's the pattern in the present tense and in the past tense? We switch, we switch or change the position of the verb. And remember now, I traveled. The question will be, did I travel? So you're using that do auxiliary. Did is the past tense for do, right? I do, I did, okay? Did you travel? Did you travel? 
did she travel? Okay, did we travel? And then did they? The great part about this, you guys, is of course, there's no changing, you know, there's no, it's all the same, okay? Did is in the past tense, and that is the part that indicates the past tense question for you. Okay, so let's look at the answers for these questions. Did I travel? Yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Okay, also what you guys can do, and don't, don't get too overwhelmed by this, but you can create a, a sentence with a negative aspect to get a similar answer. So you said, did I travel? Didn't I travel? Like, didn't I? Could also happen here. You could have a negative question um, that also is just, didn't I do that? Like, you think you did, but maybe you forgot. <laughs> okay, did you travel? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Did she travel? Yes, she did. Let's write that here. Yes, she did. Or no, she didn't. Okay, same. Did we travel? Yes, we did. No, we didn't. Those are all the same. You're just changing the pronoun. That's the great part of this. Did we travel? Yes, we did. Or no, we didn't. Did they travel? Yes, we did. And no, they didn't. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is instead of sitting here and watching me on the board this whole time, let's do a little bit of practice, okay? Um, so what, before we do some practice, I want to show you guys um, some of the most common, so we, we, we know now how to make the past tense, the simple past tense for regular verbs, okay? Simple past tense for regular verbs, you guys, we use ed okay for irregular it's different all over the place so let me give you like the 12 most common irregular verbs in english all right you guys let's take a look at these are the base form verbs i've got um 12 verbs up here that are um the most most common okay so most common irregular verbs in the past tense. So let's take a look and you guys just write these down and really practice them because you're going to use them all of the time. Okay, so the past tense of to be is, you guys already know this, we just did this, was or were. Okay, come is came. Get in the past tense, you guys, is got. So it changes from E to O. Give changes to gave. Go is, uh, let's see, went, and they don't change in those in the person. So I went, you went, she went. So that's really, at least there's that part of it. <laughs> Has and then had, know and knew, uh, make and made, she made a cake yesterday, mean or meant, um, Say, said, see is saw, and think is thought. Okay, thought. Um, let's let's do a couple of examples. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's see. We got stuck in the mud. Okay, we got stuck. We got stuck. Um, she gave him a hug. Okay, gave, got. Okay, those are the past tense there. Um, everyone, so this is like they, everyone went to the party. Everyone went. There's that past tense. Okay. Um, I thought we, I thought, how about this? I thought about it. 
I thought about it. I thought about that. Okay, I thought about that. Um, uh, Amy knew what she did. Ooh, what happened there? Okay, so thought is the past tense for think, and then past tense for know is new. Okay, just like I have a new marker or a new haircut. It's the same pronunciation. We never pronounce that K. Okay, it's new. I don't, I, I can't really explain that to you, but English is just kind of crazy. Um, okay, so these are just some of the irregulars. Now, we do use this in the same way if we're going to make negatives. So we're just going to insert here, didn't, and then change back to the original form. So the original base form, if you look up here, these are the base form, and this is past. Okay, so keep in mind base and then past, okay? So uh, I thought about that. I didn't think about that. I thought about that is positive. I didn't think about that is the negative, okay? So take a minute right now, you guys, and I want you to change these sentences. So one, two, three, um, four, and I'm gonna give you one more here, five. I want you to change them into the negative. So you're gonna remove it out of this form, take it back here and put didn't in front of it. So, um, so Charles meant to call her. Charles meant to call her. So we've got it here in this past tense. I want you to change it into the negative. Okay, so you've got five of them there. Um, pause this video and please write those down and we'll be back in just a second and we'll work on them together. All right, let's take a look at what you guys have. I hope that you did really well on this and that it wasn't too difficult. So the first sentence, number one, we got stuck in the mud. Let's change that to the negative. We, we're gonna use didn't get stuck in the mud. Okay, so you're gonna put in didn't and then go back to that base form, okay? Number two, she gave him a hug. She didn't give, okay? Not gave, we're going back to give. And I'm just doing that because I'm not writing the whole sentence. I wanna get through a lot more stuff today. We've got about oh, five minutes left. Um, okay, so everyone went, everyone didn't go to the party, okay? And then number four, Amy knew what she did. Amy didn't know what she did. And then five, um, and Charles meant, Charles, that's a man's name, didn't, you guys got it? Didn't mean to call her. Okay, he didn't mean to call her. Um, awesome. Okay, that's a really good amount of stuff that we've covered in this lesson today. Um, I wanna do one other thing with you guys and I'll, I'll get you started and then I want you to finish it and then we will work on it in our class next Tuesday, okay? So let me show share this with you over here and we will get started on practicing these things. So let's take a look at some practice here, okay? Um, take a look at that, you guys, and then we'll work on it here together. So the instructions say, complete this biography of American poet Emily Dickinson. Use the simple past form in the verbs, of the verbs in parentheses. So these are the parentheses down here. Um, and then it gives you a little bit more information about the answers. Okay, let's see. If you need a minute, you guys pause the video. All right, so let's take a look. Emily Dickinson, one of the most famous American poets, the verb down below here in the parentheses is live. Okay, and then it changes to lived. Simple, these are the simple past forms. Okay, so this is a great way to practice this. 
Her favorite topics, so this is her, this is in the past tense, were, okay? Some of these are irregular. Dickinson, lead, an unusual life. That's the present tense. We're gonna make it in the past tense. This is an irregular one, led. Dickinson led. So if you guys are keeping track, you know, I like to make lists. So let me show you something here actually as an example. Here is a list. I hope you guys can see this here. Look at this list. So we've got the base form, this past tense form, and this past participle. So the past tense of say is said, okay? Make is made. Okay, all of these. So these are like the 50 most common ones. Um, and this one that we just looked at here is lead. You can see it here, L-E-A-D. And then the past tense is lead. Um, so I will make this available to you guys. Um, I will post this on our site here. And I can email those of you who are interested as well. So um, I'm going to stop sharing this and then let's go back to my other screen here. And okay, great. So, you know, getting more comfortable with um, with those past tense irregular things is going to be really helpful. Okay, let me bring you guys over here. Um, okay, so Dickinson led an unusual life during the 1860s. 1860s, she, here's the verb, become, we're going to change that to became. She became a recluse. What is a recluse? Um, just below here where it says, so it's nice, it gives, it gives you a little definition here. It says recluse is somebody who stays away from other people. So somebody who likes to be by themselves or alone. Okay. She almost never blank her house in Amherst, Massachusetts, and she only blank white. Okay, so we've got the verb to leave and to wear. Leave is irregular and it is left. She never left her house. She almost never left her house in Amherst, Massachusetts. And she only, this is also an irregular one, we're gonna say war, war. So in the past tense of to wear, she wore white. Dickinson blank, very few people to visit her, but she blank a lot of friends. Oh my gosh, this is a long sentence. So we have three of them in there. Okay. Um, Dickinson allowed, this is regular past tense. So we're just gonna simply put the ED there. Okay. Um, and so your question, I know what your question is, is how do I know if something is regular or irregular? And my advice to you is to practice the irregular English verbs, okay? I've got some really good ideas too. There are some um, like verb wheels that are really helpful. Um, and we could link those in our product pages on the site. So it, it's just one of those tools to help you organize the information in your head, okay? Um, okay, so Dickinson allowed very few people to visit her, but she had, had, okay, that's it irregular. She had a lot of friends and she wrote them many letters. Okay. Um, okay, great. So let's look at this next one here and we are going to stop for the day. But what I want you guys to do is finish this for me. So on your papers, okay, pause this screen and I want you to put the correct forms of these verbs. So you've got the first one here done for you. Dickinson wasn't only interested in poetry. So they give you the verb and then they tell you if they want you to make it negative or positive. Okay, so here's another example. Dickinson didn't own a typewriter. Okay, you guys can see these negatives. Dickinson didn't. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so I want you guys to finish this for our class for our next class um, and be prepared to let's share our answers together. Um, okay, I'm going to stop this sharing and end for today.
Really great work. That was a lot of content. I like to move quickly because we can always stop videos and reread them or re-listen to it. Um, and so I want to get you guys going as quickly as possible and feeling confident in your English. So um, great work. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Mm -hmm.